Alrighty. Hey gang. Welcome back. So, I got my notes here. That's what I'm looking down at. Uh, today, I want to talk to you guys about materials. Material sourcing, um, where to find stuff, how to get it for the best price, all that stuff. Now, this is mostly intended as a resource for those of you who are building uh, stoves to my plans, uh, but hopefully there's going to be some good info in here for all you guys, but I know I've been getting a lot of questions from all you guys about where to find the stuff, um, how to get it, what to do, and uh, so let's talk about some of that th that stuff. So um, I'm mostly going to focus on materials that are uh, used to build the tiny cook stove and the walker full masonry cook stove. Um, and ceramic power board and things like that. But we'll go over some other stuff as well, uh, just to cover some of the things that have been done in the past and keep it all in one place here. So rocket stove materials, you know, typically um, we've always used cob, right? So clay, sand, straw, and there's a whole lot of resources out there on how to do that yourself, uh, test your materials, dig it up in your area, find that stuff where you are and get it for free. I'm not going to go into that. What I do want to let you know is that, you know, a lot of times, um, especially when using mortar and doing smaller jobs, um, you wouldn't want to do this if you're trying to cobble a whole stove. Um, but when you just need a little and uh, you need some for mortar for your, for your brickwork or whatever, um, I like to go to the masonry store and just buy the bags of fire clay. Now out here on the west coast we have Lincoln 60 is the brand I choose. Um, you don't think you need to be too specific, most fire clays are going to work. Uh, but it's typically somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 15 bucks for a, I think it's a 50 pound bag. Um, and that goes a long way, so to build a tiny stove here I think I went through probably two bags. Um, with that, you need some sharp sand, some mason sand. Um, silica sand is nice and white. There's other uh, materials out there that'll work for, for mason sand. Um, you can get it, again, at any masonry supply. Usually they'll sell you a five gallon bucket of it for a couple bucks. You can buy it in bags. You can buy it in bags at hardware stores. A lot of times, um, uh, traction sand and things like that are often sharp masonry sand. Um, so, there's the clay and sand, that's gonna be for your mortar. You know, if you're building, um, using cob, you'll want a little bit of straw or fiber. And again, I'm not gonna to go too far into those details here. Uh, there's a lot of resources for plasters and fibers and all that stuff online for you right now. Brick, um, I always try and find salvage brick if I can. Y you can't always, but if you put an ad out um, on Craigslist, say an old brick wanted or things like that, if you don't see any for sale, a lot of times you'll find that stuff um, in your area. So if you just want to go buy some, you know, Home Depot has 44 cent bricks, at least in my area, clay bricks. Um, and that's about as cheap as you can find. I bought salvage bricks uh, from old building sites and I've paid as little as 25 cents, but usually around 50 cents a brick um, seems to be kind of the going rate. So whether they're new or used, uh, you'll probably end up about the same price there unless you can salvage them, which is pretty possible, especially like I said, if you put the feelers out, if you're willing to do some work, a lot of times people have stuff they just don't want to move. So if you get out there and do it, you can usually have at that stuff. Stone, same kind of thing. Um, I'm not against buying nice flat stones like for my tops at the masonry store, the hardscape store, landscaping store. Um, and a lot of that is due to my location. You know, we just don't have that stuff naturally available here. I think that in other parts of the country, you could probably go out and find yourself some nice flat stone. Um, I do collect stone from my property for my perimeters and, and things like that. But for the most part, uh, when I want specialty stone, I end up having to buy it. It's not terribly expensive. You don't usually need a whole lot. Um, but I'm not afraid to go buy some nice looking stone for the tops if I need to. Okay. That pretty much covers the masonry. Um, flue pipe, you know, if you're building a cob type bench, uh, you'll need flue pipe and, or a half barrel or um, for your chimney as well. Again, salvage is great. Best thing you can do is put up ads and feelers on Craigslist. You can search for a long time and look for ads, but if you put one out there, there's a lot of people with junk out there in their backyard they love to get rid of. So you don't need great flue pipe. It can be pretty ratty for inside the cob bench because it really is just a form. It's holding the clay in shape while the clay dries, and then the cob makes the, the passageway. It's not the pipe, so don't be too concerned about leaks or, or things like that. In the flue pipe, the cob is the 
monolithic structure and the pipes are the forms just like the half barrels drums and barrels boy we, we've gone over that a lot um, in the past so you know industrial sites um, uh, <clears throat> metal scrap yards a lot of times we'll have stuff like that um, the little drums 15 gallon grease drums uh, asking at oil change places especially big truck service stations they usually get oil and grease and stuff like that in big drums so those are great places to look anyone that's going through a lot of those materials will usually have those on hand and not uh, put too much value on them so you can get them for cheap or free often so and lastly my best resource for those was always at um, uh, fuel company um, yards like we have a lot of heating oil that's used here and in my area so I would go down to their local yard where they would run the trucks out um, and they would always have tons of barrels down there and they were always willing to to give me shoddy ones so that's all the normal stuff so let's go into what I really wanted to talk about which is ceramic fiberboard uh, your risers your ceramic fiber risers refractory things like that so this stuff a little bit esoteric it can be really hard to find and one of the biggest pitfalls for all of us is that at this point we are so accustomed to going on the computer finding it online clicking on it buying it without talking to anybody all that stuff that doesn't exist in this world it does but you don't want to do it so i'm getting this info out there for you guys who are building my stoves and marlo sorry i didn't get this to you sooner um and that isn't to say you did anything wrong, uh, so we'll cover some of that. So all of this stuff is available for pretty inexpensive prices, typically from large industrial suppliers, the manufacturers, and boiler makers and things like that. There are some people starting to recognize the value of it and that it's kind of hard to find for an individual, so it's starting to show up online on places like eBay, Amazon. I put a link uh, in my Amazon um, you know, I've got a little Amazon list there, parts for you guys. I put a link to some fiberboard that's available on Amazon. Here's what I want to say to all of you, the biggest takeaway from this whole video. Do not buy this stuff online. Don't buy it at Amazon. Don't buy it off eBay. Do not buy it from an online vendor. Um, unless you are, you know, short on time, it's convenient for you and you don't care about the price. Um, price is not an issue. You will generally pay twice as much, if not three times as much, or four times as much for this stuff. And shipping is the killer, and it's always the killer. Whether you get it from industry for cheap, or whether you get it from someone online, you're going to pay through the nose to have this stuff shipped, because it's big and flat and kind of heavy. So, my advice, this is what I tell everybody. I've had lots of people, you know, I was, I was sourcing risers for a while and reselling them to you guys to try and make it convenient for you. And, um... What I ended up doing was really just telling everyone how to do it themselves because it's just much easier. So, here's the gist of it. There are industrial refractory suppliers everywhere across our country, okay? Anywhere where there's been big industry, uh, big mills, um, petroleum chemical processing, you know, any kind of large industry. There's typically boilers, there's furnaces. Um, there's all kinds of, of uses for this stuff in industry and so suppliers exist in almost every metro area and even in smaller metro areas from multiple vendors across the country. They don't typically have websites. If they do, they're shoddy and they really don't do online sales. These people are set up uh, to do business with other industries. So there's purchasing agents calling sales reps and they're getting quotes. And so you got to kind of enter that world if you want to find good deals on this stuff. Um, <clears throat> so you got to pick up the phone. You need to look in your area, get on Google, search refractory products. If you don't find stuff there, try foundry. Um, there'll be small casting foundries in your area. Call those guys if you can't find stuff. Ask them where they get their crucibles. Ask them where they get their hot handling materials because they will know their local suppliers if, if you can't find any other source. Typically, these suppliers are going to be big businesses, big industry, and they're going to have locations everywhere, so you'll need to find their main website, find the location closest to you, and just get on the phone, call the sales reps. They're typically going to give you quotes. They're not going to give you just a straight price. A lot of them won't sell singles. Some of them will. A lot of them will sell pallets. And in all cases, shipping, um, if you need to do it that way, is always going to be a bear, and it's almost always going to be freight and on a pallet. So that isn't a showstopper. After I said all this, 
I always have to have stuff shipped in. I live way out in the middle of nowhere, so I'm three hours and ferry rides away from my local supplier. So I always go with pallets. It ends up being 100 bucks, 200 bucks on an order. I just try to maximize my orders. Obviously, if you're just building one stove, that might not work for you, but maybe you can partner with somebody. Um, but you're probably going to pay that much in shipping, even for a couple pieces from someone on eBay. So again, skip the eBay. Just go right to the source. That's what um, eventually we all learn to do. So let's talk about some of those sources, some of the prices. Um, there's a couple large ones that are generally, if not nationwide, they're close to it. Harbison Walker, H-A-R-B-I-S-O-N, and the second word is Walker. Um, and their website is thinkhwi.com. They're not my best recommendation because they do, at least lo my local um, salespeople only sell it by the pallet. Um, or by the by the case, which I think is 12 boards, um, probably four times more than you need. But uh, but they do sell it, and they do have locations just about everywhere. They're they're just about ubiquitous in in most of our regions. So Harvest and Walker is a great one. Another one that I like here on the West Coast for the most part, and in, into the uh, into the inland West and Denver and, and Utah is EJ Bartels. Um, EJ Bartels. Now they're kind of under the radar. They don't have a big website. You got to look for me in your area. Hugh, I did find one of these guys in Spokane. So I haven't told you that. I just found it yesterday. So um, check them out if you haven't bought board yet. I've typically bought from them. They have the size that I quoted, the 36 by 48. Some of the other guys only sell the 24 by 48s or various sizes. EJ Bartels, they'll sell those um, boards to you, you know, somewhere 120 bucks a board, let's say. That comes out at just under 10 bucks a square feet, a square foot for this is for one inch thick. Um, that's a reasonable price. Now you can get cheaper. The cheapest that I've heard from some of my sources and some of you guys out there looking is just under, you know, it looks like four bucks a square foot is about the bottom end for this one inch ceramic fiber board. Um, so we've got a company, another refractory supplier, Sara, C-E-R-A, Materials. They're in Oregon, Houston, and L.A., and they'll do 24 by 48 sheets um, for 40 bucks. it sounds like. So that's a pallet only is, again, a downside. But that's 4 bucks a square foot. That is inexpensive. Now, one of my favorite suppliers, Western Industrial Ceramics, out of Tualatin in Oregon, Portland area, and Los Angeles. They will sell single sheets to you. They come in... Um, a little bit more, almost six bucks a square foot, depending on who you talk to there. <laughs> Funny how that works. And uh, different sizing, um, but good pricing, self singles, easy to deal with. I really like those guys. Now, I bought a lot of risers from them, both six inch and eight inch inside diameters, um, and they have good prices on those as well and in various lengths. So we'll get into risers more in a minute. <clears throat> Another really good one that I've uh, been really fond of, these guys are in uh, Pennsylvania, just south of Pittsburgh. This is United Refractories. Um, they offer real good pricing. They're really nice folks, so they're worth a call. You can find them online um, under United Refractories or RefSource or Temtech are different ways to find them. Um, and they are in McMurray, uh, PA, and they're a great resource. They also have a manufacturing facility in Illinois, so you might want to check them out. Um, now, one of the ones that's uh, spread out across the Great Lakes and the Eastern Seaboard that I've had really good luck with is Firebrick Engineers. They have a lot of locations, they're nice folks, and they have good products. So, I've bought 8-inch um, ID risers from them. They're only a half inch thick, these are just ceramic fiber risers. Um, 12 inches long, I bought them for as cheap as like, I want to say it was like 8 bucks each or something. I mean, a whole riser was like not even 30 bucks. So. Um, they have some great pricing. Again, not great at shipping. They'll freight or UPS and it costs you a fortune, but they have locations everywhere and they're worth um, a chat with to, if you're looking for materials like that. So I'm going to stop there. That's a starting list. There's a lot more, you guys. Again, get on Google. Search Refractory. Search Foundry. Uh, search refractory products, ceramic fiber, things like that. Pick up the phone and call them. Do not try and buy this stuff online. That's the biggest takeaway. Now, again, if you are way out like I am, you just want a little bit, you need some for a door maybe, I'd get it on Amazon. Um, if you are, you know, in the middle of nowhere and you're not going to get any of this stuff any other way, then by all means, do go ahead and use those um, other online resources, click and ship kind of things, and, and uh, 
you can get it easily, but you'll pay a lot more. So um, now that goes for the risers as well. Now, of course, um, I've been through a lot of different uh, ceramic fiber risers. Two inch thick, one inch thick, half inch thick. To be honest with you, thickness, um, I'm not too concerned about. The half inch risers performed excellently, believe it or not. They're a little fragile. Um, they hold up once they're in place and they'll be there forever. But, uh, you know, anywhere from one inch to two inch is fine. The risers tend to be anywhere from 30 to 60 bucks for a 24 inch section of a reasonably thick, like a one to two inch cross section, depending on who you talk to. Again, call the refractory suppliers, ask them for riser sleeves. That's what they're referred to in industry. They're used to pour molten uh, metals into castings and they allow that metal to stay hot going in so it doesn't start to set and create voids in their castings so riser sleeves is the industrial name you can also just say ceramic fiber formed shapes cylinders hollow tubes they'll know what you're talking about and they'll be able to help you so that covers um the refractories and the refractory stuff and uh, again you guys are welcome to reach out to me um, all you plan holders and folks building them i am here to consult with so reach out to me and you know, I'll help you find some, you know, I've been doing a lot of resource or a lot of sourcing and we'll help you find some stuff in your area if, if you haven't been able to. So glass tops, uh, stove tops, windows, things like that. Let's talk about the tops. The tops are going to come out of old ranges and stoves, uh, old metal recycling places, junkyards, um, even donation like Habitat for Humanity spots, a lot of times they'll get non-working ones. Typically they just wanna um, salvage the metal out of those. So they typically don't want the glass. You can simply walk up to any kitchen range and with a sharp razor, you should be able to just cut the um, seal that's around the perimeter and carefully with a little flat pry bar and a razor blade, you should be able to work that top off there without disassembling the oven or stove. So those things should be free. Sometimes I paid five bucks for them at, at, at salvage places. Um, but keep your eyes peeled and eventually you'll see one of those things sitting out by the, by the road in someone's house or something like that. Um, ceramic glass windows. You know, I like to use a product called Robax. It's made by Schott, S-C-H-O-T-T. -T. There's a few other products out there that are in that same range. You want a high rating, 1300, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit at least. Um, it should be ceramic glass, not tempered glass. And salvage sources are gonna be old wood stove um, doors. And at this point, that's the only one I really know of that's a salvage source. A lot of the other stuff that looks high tempered is not the same stuff. You can build these windows out of the stove tops. They won't be as clear though. They're, they're just translucent and opaque usually, not totally clear. The material can be cut, both the tops and the ceramic glass. It can be cut with a wet saw. I use my tile saw, my brick saw, and it's a little chippy on the sides, but it works pretty well. So you can cut them down to sides if you need to. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, I didn't really cover where to get that glass other than salvage. Another great source for windows for ceramic glass. You can find little pieces on eBay. And uh, in this case, that is a good resource for eBay, if you ask me. So they're typically not too expensive and not too expensive to ship. Um, you should be able to spend 40 bucks or so and get yourself a window and a little bit extra. And I think that's about it. So all of you have been uh, building these again. Thanks so much. I'm having so much fun talking to you guys. And thanks for your feedback and input. Uh, Matt, thank you for your help on this video and, and you and Marlo and everybody else out there. I really, really am having a great time um, helping you guys on your builds. And I uh, can't wait to see them on fire. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. Um, if you got any questions, hit me up. And uh, thanks a lot for watching as always. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.